It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. This is my Toro Power Handle Sport Lawn 25. I wasn't going to start try to fix this because I just didn't want to. But because my friend Scott Keller donated $100 to see this video, I guess this video is sponsored by Mr. Briggs. I put the uh, spark tester on here and it doesn't get any spark. However, feels pretty good. You know, when you pull it. This thing was probably made in 1967 or 68. It's well over 50 years old. And it actually looks okay. But I have a feeling it's missing some linkages. As you guys know about this power handle, it's like the flex from Troy Built. There's a wing nut here. Bolt that you uh, loosen and then this entire handle comes off the uh, attached reel see put it back on slide it in the bracket put it back down again and then you tighten this again it has attachments for a snow blower which I have two of or three of it's called the Snowhound 20 it also has a power pump you know for draining pools or flooded basements or something like that uh, and also an edger uh, as you guys saw from previous episodes I had a, a roller a lawn roller that I sold recently so it, it comes with a lot of attachments that you can get uh, I have about three or four of them different kinds this sport lawn one is very intriguing to me because it's a uh, cylinder reel blades you know for like golf courses and stuff uh, people say that these real blades actually cut the lawns better than rotary lawnmowers, you know. So it is kind of interesting to get going. Uh, but uh, I think I'm going to have a problem trying to get spark for this engine because uh, it has a points magneto and condenser system here, which I want to try to remove and uh, convert it to an electronic uh, ignition. Uh, I hope I have uh, a magneto that would fit this flywheel. Also, I think I'm missing some parts from the linkages for the carburetor. I did check the gas tank. The gas tank is very, very clean. I have this uh, 3.5 shop vac, the hang up one. Hang up one means that you can take this thing here, drill it to the wall and it can hang on your wall. It's pretty convenient, and it actually has a very long hose. Um, it, it doesn't seem to really suck that well, if you know what I mean. Other shop vacs I've had, the suction is much better than this. Uh, I got this uh, for free from my friend Nick from Bellport. So I listed it on uh, locally here for $25, and some nuts come in to get it. So, we're not getting any spark. I never expected to get any spark. But like I said, I think we're missing some stuff. So what I'm going to do is, this is the um, Briggs & Stratton one-piece flow jet. I'm sorry, two-piece flow jet. And I say it's two pieces because you have the flow jet uh, carburetor here. And it's connected to a separate intake manifold. They have a one-piece flow jet, which is for lawn tractors usually. I've had those two. This is the choke, I believe. Well, it says choke but there's a piece that's broken off there. So I think this is open and I believe choke is there because inside the flap is going like that, closing it. Um, here's a breather uh, pipe. It's not a tube, it's a pipe because it's metal. And I'm just gonna try to take this um, air cleaner off. There you go filters inside here well you know it kind of worked because look there's grass there's grass clippings in it so I was looking at the linkage check this out it's it's not attached to anything at least I don't feel it is and also look it, it it's bent there so I can't get it higher than that and also you see this, 
this is the governor the the the, the link here the hook it's not attached to anything <laughs> i think it has to be attached onto that one this one here these two are supposed to be attached see there's the throttle there's a spring that's attached to it i don't know where that spring is going to leading to but i'm pretty sure this hook here attaches into this hole which it's not so somebody's been in here of course uh, i don't know if i'm still missing things i might still be missing things but i'm i'm gonna go in the backyard and i have another power handle but it's kind of disassembled maybe i can get a better look at how the throttle um yeah throttle linkages work you know because i i've looked online to try to see and i really couldn't find too much detail on this exact carb there's like three or four variations of this uh flow jet uh i've taken apart one before and that was for a uh, ground blower and over here i believe to take this apart you need to pull this long jet out right otherwise you can't get this top off and also this um vent pipe here is supposed to be in this bracket not under it you know so somebody's definitely been in here uh but first things first we need to remove this engine cover first and then we can get a better look at how the linkages go. And then uh, at the same time, try to replace the uh, magneto because we're not getting any spark out of this one for sure. So the guy came to look at it he thought it was bigger than the picture it's true when you take pictures of things it could be like it, it could have looked like it, re it was really big but in reality it's not very big so i have another backup guy that's coming to get it uh early mailbag as you guys know i got this uh air compressor um uh, pretty good one too um it has a uh, 5.4 cfms or 6.4 CFMs at 40 pounds per square inch. So this is a very powerful uh, air compressor, at least the most powerful one I've ever had, you know? And uh, so it has a simple hose that comes out of that connector and it comes into this kind of thing, you know, so that if you had an air tool that you could just plug it in. But uh, I, I have a hose that uh, is like this you know so that you can pump up tires and stuff and it has a quick release coupler that goes like that you know same thing as this but uh i needed to output like that you know so i didn't have that so i went and bought one so i can attach this to it you know and this is the coupler for that this was ten dollars i mean you know eight something plus tax you know so it was like 980 something, whatever. And uh, that's kind of expensive for just that. I probably could have gone to Harbor Freight Tools and got it, but you know, I'm not gonna make a trip. Gas money, you think about the gas, round trip, the time it takes, whatever. Um, sometimes it's just worth it to buy it online. It's delivered to your house. You know, you just walk out of your house and grab it, you know? So I'm gonna loosen this one and put this one on. I hope it fits. And then I can attach this to it, you know? Like that. That's what I want. So it looks like it fits. Do turning it the wrong way. Let's try this out, huh? Got it running. I'm gonna try this. It's cool. I don't feel any leaks. I'm letting it run to see. Uh, when it stops. Oh, there you go. 
I have a feeling that it stopped because the circuit breaker broke or went out. That's what I'm thinking. So it did. It uh, blew my circuit breaker. Um, it didn't make it to 80 though. And it uh, looks like it's slowly decreasing. So I might have a leak, slight leak, but I don't hear anything though. Pretty powerful, but I'm gonna have a problem if this keeps on uh, busting circuit breakers every time I use it. You know, I didn't have that problem with my other compressor. It was much smaller, probably drew a lot less uh, voltage, you know. So I might have to get like a dedicated uh, outlet because I've got like, <laughs> I've got like 50 different things connected to this one. Got the two bottom screws off of this. And now let's take the recoil starter off. Rats! <laughs> this ball bearing thing looks better than the one on the uh, 58 Professional. Uh-huh. This is the air vein. When this thing is turning, air flows, kind of puts a little bit of air on this, like a sail of a sailboat, and keeps this down. Or like they say in Canada, down. Yeah, so I'm going to, I guess I'm going to try to hook this hook into this hole. Like so. There. See? That's right. See the link there? Pitches. <clears throat> uh -huh. I have a feeling something's supposed to go there though, because this is threaded. So when it stops, I don't know. Also, I can't find the uh, wire that kills it. Right? Uh, where's the wire that kills it? And there's a thing here where the throttle is supposed to go. You know, throttle cable. This has a throttle cable right here. But uh, how does this go though? Does this go like there? Is there a hole there? Oh, there's a hole there. All right, so. There's the throttle right there. So I'll connect that onto there, I guess. Let's go in the backyard and look at the other one. Similar situation. Uh huh. Well, look at this one. This. Is this, this can't be right, right? This is through there. I think maybe they just hooked it in there for time being. Oh, wait a minute. Look, you, you have one here. I don't know why this one's here. Oh, okay. All right, so the, the right one, the right one moves this one, the one on the bottom. Okay, and then the left one, the left one moves this one. Hmm, two of them? Unless one's attached to the choke and one's attached to the throttle. So if this is here, then the right one controls the throttle, all right? And then there's a left one that goes in here that I guess connects onto the choke maybe? That might be it. Oh, look, I see. This one's to the clutch. I see, okay. So there's only one, that you, you can choke it with your hand, right? The right one is for the throttle, which is here. And then I don't think this is attached. It's, I don't know, is it attached to that? Because uh, the clutch would be 
missing on this one, but the clutch is attached to this, okay? All right, so I've got a little bit of an idea now, and also I can't see the wires uh, coming out of, I mean, I see a wire there, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Because I'm wondering, you know, how to shut it off, you know what I mean? Uh, where's the thing to shut it off? If I can't find it, it could be shut off and I'll never get spark, you know what I mean? So that's what I'm trying to look for, can't find it. Okay, so that was productive. Went back there, figured out how to do some stuff. I uh, connected this throttle over here. So now that I'm moving the lever, it moves the linkages. With the throttle over here, this is no tension. And then if you want more tension, actually this is less tension. If you want more tension, it pulls like that. And then there's more tension, I guess, to speed it up, you know? So we'll do it least tension right now. But at least it seems like it's all connected here. And this is, I guess, a m manual pull up or push down. There we go. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe, you know? So now we're going to uh, remove that magneto and try to find an electronic one. Lots of oil build up here, I see. So this air vein is connected to the magneto. Yeah, this is not going to work. One of the wires is not even attached. It's busted. What a mess. Uh, I'm going to cut this wire off. Because I don't plan on using the points condenser at all. There you go. Look at this mess. One was ground, one goes to the points condenser. So I'm going to try to find another uh, magneto that fits this. So I think I found a, uh, a good magneto. Um, this one I pulled off of a uh, lawn tractor engine. Uh, one of the three that I got yesterday, remember? This was that. But this is made for a lawn tractor with a bigger magne uh, a bigger flywheel, you know, rounder, so that this entire thing is not exactly touching the flywheel. So this one here fits, okay? And I'm going to have to test the circuit to see whether or not it's a good magneto, but this is missing the uh, end to it. So I just removed the end to the um, points one, right? Because I'm not going to use this anymore. And I'm going to put it on this one. So it just has to make a ground contact there. So I'm going to connect this and then I'm going to test this magneto to see if it's good. <laughs> I probably should have tested it first before I did this, but it's okay. It's all fun. Not really. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Now we're going to test this magneto to see if it's good. Put it on 20,000 ohms or continuity for continuity. And then you put the red one on this one and you touch the contacts here. And if you get over 2.5, it's good. I learned this trick from one of Mixed Mower's videos. Of course, my battery just ran out of the GoPro. Guys ever think about getting GoPros, whatever? Buy like 10 batteries, because they suck. Anyway, here we go. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Okay, 4.42. Four point four three. So it looks like this this magneto's good. Four point four. Four point five. Four point four. Right around there. Four point four. So this should be a good magneto, and I uh, crimped that onto there. Uh, the middle wire sticks out. You bend it down so that this metal is contacting it, you know? So this should be a good magneto. I'm gonna clean the contacts over here a little bit and uh, we should be okay to go. Let's contact here, contact there. Magnet looks pretty good, so I'm not gonna do too much, but you know, just a little. Then you have this the contact over here. On both sides. And then I like to do this a little bit. So you can tell that this is a um, this fits this flywheel like a lawnmower flywheel and not a lawn tractor flywheel, is because when you put it on here onto the magnet, right? It's it's the 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 way it's shaped fits perfectly, you know. Actually, this might this might still be uh, a little bit different than that, but it's close enough, you know what I mean? Like um, this one here, you put it on here. It doesn't exactly, you know, match the the curvature of the flywheel is what I'm trying to say. Whereas if you take the original one here, it's perfectly, um, you know, aligned to the curvature of the flywheel. So that's what you want. But sometimes you uh, can't get that, you know. If it's close enough, it'll create a nice spark. And this one's close enough. So I'm just going to uh, attach a kill wire onto this, lead it to wherever I figure out how to do, you know. And there's a lot of crap in there, you know. It's okay. I just want to see if this damn thing starts. I have to put the air vein on here, okay. This is important. This goes in like that. I have to get a business card to put in between there. That is a gap of uh, probably 9 one thousandths to 10 one thousandths to 11 one thousandths, depending on the kind of business card you're using. Uh, standard one will do. Just put it right there where the magnet is. Let it stick. Like that. So it sucks there. Push it down. Make sure it's tight. You just... You basically just want the magneto as close to the flywheel as possible without touching. That's basically the rule of thumb. And a business card will do that. So that one fits there. I have to adjust this one a little bit. There we go. Do we see the hole? It feels good. I'm gonna go slow with the impact. You gotta be careful. You should just use a um, ratchet, but I don't want to. If you go slow, it'll be all right. Just so it clicks a few times. That's tight. Okay, let's see if we get hold the business card with your thumb and then turn it. There you go. Business card is out of there, and it is as close you're gonna get to it without it um, touching. And that's what you want because it builds that electronic magnetic field, whatever.
creates a spark. <laughs> Hopefully it creates a spark. So we have a new electronic ignition on here now. Let me connect this air vane back on. We're gonna put the cover on and give it a couple of pulls to see if we get spark. And I have just hooked on this air vane onto that linkage again. See? And now we can put this back on. I'm gonna get rid of this. Just got rid of the uh, oil buildup and the rat poo and seeds in there. And while this pulls pretty well, I'm gonna shoot some uh, lubricant into the hole just so that it rubs a little bit better, you know? The hole there. Much better. When you're turning it, see it splatters the oil and lubricates everything in there, like the coils and stuff. And it also protects it from moisture too, you know, the lubricant. So, uh, I should attach a wire to there in case I, in case I forget. I'm gonna find a kill wire to attach to this. Found an old kill wire from another Magneto. I should have put this on before I put that on. Easier. There we go. So I have a kill wire here. And I'm just gonna lead it out somewhere around here so that I could figure out where the throttle is where you can shut it off, you know? Otherwise, I don't know how I'm gonna shut it off. I want this underneath. No, I can't do that. Underneath the air vein so it doesn't get caught. There we go. Alright, so here's going to be my uh, kill wire. I'm just going to let it hang over there later so when I figure out where I'm going to attach it to or you could just touch ground you know to the engine block and it'll shut off but I don't want it to touch anywhere because we want to test it for spark so you can't have it touching any kind of ground you know anyway so uh, let's put this back on Make sure your ground wire is sticking out here and it's not inside. All right, okay. All right, okay, we're getting somewhere there. Just gonna put on the bolts here for temporarily, hand tighten it just so we can uh, test it, okay? Okay, so the cover is on, just hand tightening the bolts. Let's see if we have any spark. I'm holding my hand underneath the thing. Tell me if you see any orange right there. Ow! Woo! I got a shock. I know we're getting spark. Yep, we are definitely getting spark. You guys saw something? I saw something. Not only did I see something, but I felt something. Which means we are getting spark. Sweet. So what progress did we make today? We didn't have spark before, now we got spark. All right, so you know what? I'm gonna blow some go-go juice in here and see if it turns over. I'm using some uh, parts cleaner and degreaser from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. This is tricky because with these flow jets, right? Um, oh, okay, so that's that's closed. Down is closed. Up is open. So you have to kind of like fish the wire in there, uh, the straw, and blow it in there because there's a hole on the bottom here that'll just leak out, you know? Let's 
fast I can fish it through there. There we go. All right, now I've got the I got the straw underneath the hole and then going into the mouth of the carburetor. There we go. I'm just gonna keep it like that. And uh, let's give it a pull and see. Uh, I should choke it, but then the straw is gonna get caught. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna choke it now. It should be fluid in there. Uh, see, I don't know if it's off or not, but let's give it a pull. Oh, holy cow! Can you guys believe that? How about that? First pull! You know, it didn't seem like it was very uh, high throttle, you know what I mean? Uh-huh, because it was at idle, that's why. Can try that again? Let's try that again. Holy cow. Of course, that was a choke, too, you know? What if I took it off a choke? All right, you know what? I'm gonna do it without choke. Now it's not catching. There we go. Maybe I should choke it again. You know what? I'm gonna put gas in it. I wanted to show you guys that it's actually very clean in there. You see that? You see that? See how clean that is? Pretty amazing, actually. So uh, I just checked for Earl too, and it's full. It's a little dark, but it's full. So it's good for testing. I'm gonna put some gas in here. So I just put gas in there, and on the very bottom, there's a petcock, a fuel shutoff but it's leaking a little bit. So uh, it's all metal, see? The fuel line, there's one metal thing that goes into there, and I don't know if that's clogged or not. I have no idea if it's getting any fuel. These flow jets are infamous for leaking a lot of gas. While I don't see any gas, doesn't mean it's not leaking. It means that maybe the gas is not getting to this area, you know? I'm going to pull this a few times and see what happens. This thing, I should either tighten this down or bang it a little.
Wow. I haven't figured out really how the throttle thing works too well, but holy cow, can you believe it started like that? I am absolutely blown away by the fact that what just happened, you know? Amazing. So it's obviously getting gas, right? It's not leaking except for maybe the petcock area, right? Uh, I need to fix this a little bit. Or maybe if I just tighten it up or something. But somebody told me that in there is a little hole and you spray some lubricant into the hole. So you know what, I'm gonna try that. And you know what, it is leaking here. I feel gas leaking in here, but um, that, that's normal for a flow jet. You know, it's not bad actually, you know. I'm amazed, I'm absolutely amazed. There's gas leaking out of there and some gas leaking out of here. But you know what, it's just a couple of drips here and there. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna remove this again and spray a little bit of lubricant in that hole that they were talking about. I take the advice and I just lost the screw. I take the advice of my subscribers because they probably have done this more than I take their advice. So I'll take this off see and they said that there's a little hole here there is but I don't know if that's the reason though. The reason is because this is just it needs to go in more you know. You know what? I, I might just take a hammer and bang that down a little bit, you know? Just to make up like a millimeter of space. Push that in because look, this is smooth. I'm gonna try and find a straw and shove it in there. I have an old can of PB Blaster. I haven't used this in a while. It was the first thing I grabbed. That's pretty free moving, you know. However, I don't feel the, I don't feel the. Um... <laughs> now I don't feel the uh, ball bearings. They're not moving now. See, now it's like freewheeling. It's it's not catching at all. It teaches me to listen to you guys. Aha! Uh -huh. I can hear it. See. You see the play here though? See that play? If it's in there more, it'll grip. If it's out, it'll grip sometimes. Put that back on. Okay, I've got that secured on here nice and tight. After oiling it, let's uh let's give her another pull and see. Amazing. mess with this fuel mixture screw a little bit. running a little bit better before at higher speeds, wouldn't you agree?
And I think something's caught. I think that air vein is caught because I'm moving this thing and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. And no tension. this, huh? Well, first of all, I don't know how I'm going to stop it. See, so this wire is still here. I don't know where to connect it to stop it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's find a belt for the pulley. Right? You need to put a belt on here. And then I guess I have to connect a, a throttle for this. You know what? I'm gonna go get the throttle from the one in the back and uh, hook it onto here and then find a belt that would fit this pulley. In the meantime, I'm going to soak the uh, blade axle overnight. So then when we do try some of these belts, hopefully it'll fit. And then uh, we can get her going. But I bet you this is gonna leak gas overnight, you know? I gotta see what I can do about that. So while the blades do move, I'm gonna lubricate this area some more. They say it's too small too. Maybe I should take a picture with me standing next to it, huh? That'll give them an idea about how big that vacuum is. Two guys came and two guys say they were too small. Anyway, look what I figured out, how to stop this thing. I was wondering what this thing is, right? And then I remembered an older mower I had a long time ago that you had a thing where you just push it over here and it, it grounds it out. That's how you stop it. Can you believe that? And then I forget, I, I am working on an old machine. So something like this is, is normal. When I first saw this, I'm like, what the hell is this? Isn't that kind of dangerous to have it next to the uh, spark plug like that? And then I figured, hey, wait a minute, that, that lines up exactly with the thing I do remember something like that you just push it down and that's how you ground it out and that's how you stop the uh, stop the mower from running interesting huh anyway so uh, pretty good progress today got the engine running runs pretty good you know I mean you could still mess with the throttle a little bit and stuff but uh, just connected it on there and uh, 
what I did before with uh, spraying a little hole in there. Seems to work just fine now with the pull start, you know. It does start on one pull, you know what I mean? <laughs> it does make you a little uneasy putting your hand where the electricity is, but when you're grounding it, you actually don't feel any jolts, you know what I mean? So it's pretty cool. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to go and get the other throttle cable, uh, not the throttle cable, but a throttle cable that will be able to attach to this and I'm going to route it through the handle and uh, adjust it onto the clutch lever, right? Then find a belt and see if we get this thing uh, spinning its blades tomorrow and actually moving, you know? Um, I need to find a belt though. These three belts are too long. So I need to see if I have a belt back there hanging on one of those handles back there and see if one of those belts is good enough to spin this clutch, you know? But uh, could you believe I got this thing, this engine running today and running pretty well, staying running? Had a little bit of a, a fuel leak over there, but I just pivoted on its uh, side like this so that maybe it won't come out, you know? Or maybe it'll come out even more. But uh, I didn't put that much gas in there. We'll see what happens. Maybe if you do that, it won't leak, you know? And actually, it doesn't leak through the carburetor anymore, so that's pretty good. Anyway, thanks for following on today's uh, episode. This episode was sponsored by Scott Keller. I wasn't going to do it unless he paid me. <laughs> uh, Scott, if you want this, you can have it. Uh, as soon as your lockdown is uh, done, come on down here and pick it up. It's yours. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, Henry. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.